So I want to look at observability and controllability. And in particular, this is going to be a question of asking what do I look at in terms of my controllable, controllability, and my observability matrices. Now, the first time you look at these things, they're always a little bit, I'd say, theoretical, and a little bit of like, well, why is this important? Um, you can do lots of eigenvalue analysis to say, okay, yeah, these are important. It's also important if you have full rank because it allows you to say, I can kind of span and see everything, whether that's in the controllability side or I can see everything in the observability side so that in the observability side allows me to, to actually do some sort of estimate of the states, even if I don't have it. The controllability side allows me to say, you know what? I can actually control something if I had all the states. So these are two sides of, of sort of a picture that really helps kind of build sort of controllers. And we're gonna think about this in the linear time invariant case where we're gonna have all constant matrices. You can kind of look at this in other, case, in other spaces. This works really well. And of course, if I have full rank, then that says, okay, it is possible. What I really wanna say eventually, although not, not gonna do as much here, is I wanna make sure that the eigenvalue spread is not too wide. Again, uh, in so many plays with matrices, if you get large eigenvalue spread, you get in big trouble in practical terms. Whether I can either connect something, control something, um, have error metrics, it just shows up everywhere. So the more we can keep the eigenvalues uh, all near each other means I can actually work with any one of those bases in a huge, in a good way. So then if I start to look at a system like this, I might say, all right, well, what would happen if I looked at a couple different A, B's, C's, right? And again, A being sort of the state variable matrix, B being how the matrix that is influenced off the input, so like a U of T, and C would be what does my output look like uh, as a function of state variables. So A is typically is always going to be a square matrix. B and C could be square, but they could also be a lot smaller. So like if I have only a single input driving it, this will look like a vector. And if I had only a single output I could measure, this would be also looking like a vector. Why single input or single output? Because I just don't want to build that many sensors or, you know, sensors or actuators because that's cost. That's like real cost, right? And so that's why I would ask interesting questions about if I build a particular system, I'd want to have these pieces to go, hey, can I get away with just like one on either side? And that's really part of the question that would come into play. So looking at a matrix here, it's a four by two, four by fours, and two three by threes. And what happens in an interesting sense, if I look at building, um, by the way, all of these matrices need some stability. They're already unstable on their own. You have at least one positive eigenvalue on the A matrix himself. And if I were to say, well, now what's the controllability matrix? Well, I would actually go, well, here's my controllability. And so the, I get the first vector B, then A, B, and so forth. And so notice like the first vector here is exactly what I have for B. So there shouldn't be any surprise there. The same thing here, all the way down. Uh, as I look at the next vector, this is basically just going to be A times B. So I'm gonna take B as a vector, multiply it on A, and it's a B to A, and that's, and then I get the next vector. And then I repeat it a couple times. And by the way, there's nothing that says that the controllability and observability matrix have to be square. It just turns out that these give us some square matrices this case, which makes it interesting and also interesting and useful to look at things. What's interesting is that these four matrices are all full rank when I look at them. Okay. And that means that, that if I were to look at these, I have sufficient ability to get to everything through the controllability side, which means that with this input, if I can make sure that whatever the input is has these two points in it, I can control it. I can at least get to every, I can at least affect every state variable. In this case, with these two different cases, whether it be one and three, one and one, I can affect each of them as long as I have that magnitude. In the reverse case, I don't see this for the observability matrix for the, for the two four by four cases. In the one case, if I use C and I just use the input, I can in fact observe everything. And it's really due to a very clever choice on the input here that allows me to get me one and all zeros here because the rest of the way, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna get there. You know, if I keep extending this multiple times out, well, I want it all zeros, keep extending all the way out, 
through this observability matrix go longer, I'm still never gonna see it, ever. So it's really clear that it, this is what gave it to me, and therefore this is a rank of one, because I see a one, a rank of four, one. I get this as a diagonal, as a diagonal, so it's clearly rank of four. This one, on the other hand, if I were to say, let me take the sensor to the third position, not so much anymore, and this one completely is just gone. It's like it's not there, and you go, well, the rank is three. So what's the problem? Well, maybe my state variables are actually smaller. Maybe it's really more three state variables than four. Maybe I've got thing. clearly I've got one of the sensors in the wrong place. Maybe there's something else in the dynamics isn't modeled right. This is a very immediate tell. It's like something is up. With the three by three cases, these are both rank equal to three. And in fact, um, you could kind of see that there's some similarities between the three by three case and the, and the four by four case. In fact, particularly if you look here, you look at these structures, you'll notice these are similar. These actually have some similarity of a different set of parameters for an inverted pendulum problem. And that is one of those cases where you want to be careful that you're actually getting the sensors. The sensor you're going to use and the actuary you're going to use are going to be in the right place.